Good afternoon and welcome once again to Digital Look TV from London. With us today to discuss the situation in capital markets are Zach Muir. He is the editor at Spreadbet magazine and Ronnie Chopra. He is a well-known equities and FX trader here in the city. Okay, let's kick off with the situation on Capitol Hill, Washington, Washington DC stateside, shall we gentlemen? Sure, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, the current standoff, is it already discounted or built into share prices into the stock market? Are markets perhaps expecting or pricing in too benign an outcome? Does in, is there room for uh, the typical phenomenon of buy on the rumor, sell on the fact? What are your exact expectations for the next two or three weeks? How do you think it will be resolved? Zach? Uh, well, the, there's an issue whether it's, it's going to be resolved at all. Um, the, now that uh, it's actually happened and maybe uh, President Obama can just blame the Republicans mm -hmm. uh, for the shutdown and any damage there is, he hasn't really got anything to lose. I mean, he's already, his legacy erosion is already in play and, you know, unless there's bigger, much bigger damage to the economy, hmm. he, he's, in, he's okay. He, really, he should have caved in before the shutdown started. That Now that he hasn't, well, it could go on and on. There's no real incentive for him, you know, his, his last term anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the markets have already factored in um, a, a fudge, at least. Okay. Uh, we saw them rebound uh, from the middle of last week, and we're, you know, we're going back towards the highs again on yes, the... Yes, 4% uh, off of the recent uh, highs. On the, on the S&P and the Dow. So really, uh, unless there's something surprising, uh, you'd expect, uh, you know, sort of the normal end-of-year rally to continue uh, here. I think there's a slight risk of maybe if there's... I mean, if it's just a sort of a very watered down solution or just mm. a couple of months uh, uh, sort of uh, sticking plaster, then we'll get a pullback. I see. Uh, but, okay. uh, but I don't think it would be anything. It would be a buying opportunity. So at the moment we're looking hopeful, but I, you know, we're, we're all in denial here. I mean, this is a, mm. a bad situation. The debt seeding uh, sort of process is a, is a ridiculous one. It needs to be changed. You can't have this com you know, coming back every few months to f change it from 17 trillion mm -hmm. to 18 trillion. To, I mean, that, it doesn't, that's not a, a long-term solution. Okay, so fudge is good. Fudge is probably the best scenario because they're not going to do anything else, really. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. What would be your expectation in case that they actually reached a very good solution, say a long-term solution, which is more or less close to a certain economic optimal solution. They actually really did something. Uh, it's, that was not going to happen. I think that uh, that's probably the only scenario that isn't going to happen. I don't see why there's any reason to, to give President Obama this, this fantastic, uh, uh, I mean, a sort of legacy thing of, of having, you know, solved the debt seeding crisis. I mean, mm. the Republicans haven't, they're not doing this for that. They're doing right. this to discredit, discredit him so they can get their man in or mm. woman in the next, the next, mm -hmm. next time. Politics at its best. Yeah. Okay. Ronnie, what do you think? Yeah, I, I pretty much agree. Um, the markets have certainly got rather confident and over exuberance does bring to mind mm -hmm. the rally of the last few days. Um, our solution is going to be found. It has to be. Otherwise, it will be catastrophic for the markets after Thursday. So I think the markets have kind of factored that in. Um, we may get a little bit of profit taking after the news is announced. Uh, markets are up 3 4%. The Dow had a 300 point gain last week. Um, I'd, I'd be on the, be a little cautious as well uh, with with the recent rally. After all, it is October, renowned for crashes, 87, 29. Um, but yeah, I mean, things are looking brighter. We may even get some sort of resolution today. Okay. Um, for example, possible effects as far as the gold price, the U.S. dollar, of how all this this entire scenario can work out. I know some well-known analysts who tell me that gold is a bit of a shady corner of the market. Um, more explicitly, they reference the fact that it's not quite, quite clear what occurred towards the end of the last month of April when we saw a sharp fall in the gold price. They think it might have been manipulated in a certain way, if I believe that's the right term, uh, just in order to prop up the U.S. dollar. What is your opinion, Zach? Have you heard this? Explanation? I'm the main proponent of it, um, but uh, the, the in the situation, as far as gold is concerned, it's very handy that there's just been a massive sell order last week uh, mm -hmm. in in on Comex uh, to bring the gold down to sort of boost the relative value or relative um, perception of the, of the dollar. Um, I think that you know the normally if this wasn't the dollar, if this was the euro and it was a Greek uh, mm -hmm. shutdown, 
I mean, people would be selling euros by the by the uh, by the bundle. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it just I, I can't see wh why people uh, would have any reason to buy the dollar ahead of any possible solution. And um, you know, the the gold gold being hedged or manipulated or mm. just generally interfered with uh, sort of just ties in with you know the the authorities trying to keep everything on a level. So mm -hmm. there's no runaway dollar move, which there was actually earlier in the month. The dollar did start to slip away quite badly. Right. So you do think, <coughs> certainly, it's, I, I have to be honest, it's the first time I've heard this, but then the gold price or intervening in favor of the dollar through gold futures is one of the policy levers that authorities have at their disposal. It's the only one they have left. They've done everything. Mm -hmm. The QE is up to, is, is a, on the max and everything else has been done uh, in terms of stimulus. Uh, the store of value issue uh, and the, the future of the dollar hmm. uh, is very important and you just cannot have gold becoming the store of value and people saying, you know, I'm just going to forget buying T-bonds, uh, I'm going to forget propping up the US debt, I'm just going to buy uh, gold. Okay. The, the, the dollar and the T-bond have to survive and have to flourish, mm -hmm. especially when you've got a debt ceiling situation going on in the background. Mm -hmm. what do you, how, how low do you see the... Ounce of gold going on COMEX. I think that the the downtrend channel um, on on, uh, on gold on the daily charts looking mm -hmm. sort of sub eleven hundred dollars at the moment. Um, you had a bull trap with a Fed not, no tapering situation, which would have stopped out everybody. That was the mm -hmm. biggest move on the upside in f one day in four years. Okay. So if you survive that bull trap, you can survive anything, and probably people didn't. And it was the other way. The market's now well down on that, and uh, uh, you know it, markets are markets are cruel, and uh, you know. Down is the easiest uh, direction after that type of move. Even if there was no other fundamental back, uh, backdrop or mm -hmm. you know, there was no shutdown, it would still yes. be the case. Okay. Markets aren't completely free. Uh, credit rating agencies. We have this whole debate on Capitol Hill. We haven't heard much from the credit rating agencies besides saying we expect that it will be solved. Uh, we've already had uh, the IMF and uh, OECD, I think, uh, down downgrading the uh, U.S. GDP, mm -hmm. um, and uh, IMF and giving lessons, you know, the sort of uh, naughty boy lessons to the U.S. in terms of uh, what's going on. I think that uh, it's uh, this just proves to me how useless the the rate credit rating ratings agencies are how biased they are as well if this was as i've said before if this was greece or spain with the shutdown mm. they'd already been they would have been slapped them down with junk uh, junk bond ratings and uh, all sorts of uh, again sort of uh, uh, insulting type of uh, behavior uh, but with the us you've got clear evidence of gdp um, shrinkage mm. uh, coming through and nothing from uh, s&p moody's or fitch so this is just a clear it's you know that they're not up to the job uh, everybody knows they're not up to the job, mm -hmm. and if you can't act in this environment, uh, really, they, they might as well close down. Okay, very forceful words, uh, Ronnie. Um, I, I think the S and P, Fitch, all the major rating agencies have obviously lost a lot of credibility over the last few years. Um, that they, they didn't see the 2008-2009 situation coming. All these major banks were still graded A plus. Mm. Um, I concur with what Zach just said. If it was Greece, then um, obviously, you know, the, the, the U.S. would have been downgraded. Um, let's see. For example, let's go talk about some specific companies. Today we had Burberry's. Uh, it's the biggest faller on the FTSE 100. It ties in very much with the outlook for China, which is also of great importance for financial markets, particularly for FTSE 100. Um, what's your take on today's news? It's, um, it's disappointing that uh, the CEO has left to go to Apple, but obviously Apple is a slightly larger fish than, than Apple is. Oh, sorry, than Burberry's is. Um, and the share price has kind of responded by losing a, a very well-respected lady. Mm. Um, shares off like 5%. Shares were overvalued? Um, they... In, in terms of comparing them with other luxury peer companies globally, not really. Okay. But uh, compared with the rest of the UK retail sector, certainly, but a lot depends on, with Burberry's especially, a lot depends on how the Chinese spending habits are. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously Chinese people like Burberry's, and as long as there are lots of Chinese people buying Burberry's goods, then uh, they'll make the profits and the valuations on, on Burberry's should be... Uh, should, should not be on the high side. But I believe I've heard you in the recent past, uh, you're not particularly 
optimistic on the Chinese economy. Is that right? Am I, I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm just concerned about some of the economic data that comes out of China. It seems to be um, very contradictory. Sometimes you'll get really good data, mm. and a week after you'll get data that's rather poor and just doesn't make any sense. So yes, one has to, to take whatever comes out of the China economic numbers don't completely with a square. pinch of salt. But having said that, if you were to go to some of these shopping centers or Burberry outlets, etc., which I have been to in the past, I haven't been inside one, but uh, you do see a lot of Chinese people queuing up and buying their goods. So that's obviously a good sign for Well, for actually, Burberry. I was just in Spain a week ago, and what I see in Madrid is a lot of businesses geared towards the Chinese tourists. I know of one outlet, it's a shopping center, three days, they got 3,000 Chinese tourists, really? all going to the very, very high-end Cartier, yeah. Burberry, Breitling. Sure. I'm astounded by that. The, the, the other thing I think that the recent news that it's going to be a lot easier for the Chinese to come into the UK. Mm -hmm. the, the Home Secretary has announced that it's going to be relaxing visa restrictions. That's surely going to be a boon for the likes of Burberry's and other luxury products in the UK. Um, there are a lot of Chinese people that, that want to come to the UK and it's been a major hindrance over the last couple of years in terms of getting a visa. So uh, perhaps you know, that, that could be a, a saving grace as well for, for so Burberry's and other luxury. Now. Uh, I'm sorry? It's not in the share price of Burberry's now. Well, I would say that the best way of losing money in the recent past has been to go short of uh, Burberry shares. They mm -hmm. just squeeze higher and higher. Mm -hmm. And I would probably, even though I don't believe the China story and I don't believe the, the figures, mm -hmm. I don't think they make them up, um, the, I still think that it's probably most, most likely to be a, a dip on the, on the departure of the CEO. So um, mm -hmm. there is maybe an opportunity there on, on for Burberry's. You use that dip as a buying opportunity. Burberry's has also been touted as a possible target for the likes of LVMH. I see. So um, you know, if, if the shares do slip a little bit more, then they may pounce. Do you think those rumors might pan out? Um, who knows? Maybe with the departure of the CEO, mm -hmm. it's, it's a possibility. Everything has a price.